This equation looks a lot like the Pythagorean theorem, but with a variable exponent. We need to solve for x in the equation 3 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x equals 5 to the power of x. The numbers 3, 4, and 5 form a famous Pythagorean triple. This gives us a strong clue for where to start. Let's test the most obvious candidate. x equals 2. We'll substitute 2 for x everywhere in our original equation. This gives us 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. First, let's evaluate 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. Next, we evaluate 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. Now we sum the terms on the left side. 9 plus 16 is 25. Finally, we evaluate the right side. 5 squared is also 25. The equation holds true. So we've confirmed that x equals 2 is indeed a solution. But here's the crucial question. Finding one solution is straightforward, but proving it's the only one requires a deeper analysis. Let's return to our original equation. To analyze this, it helps to make one side of the equation a constant. We can do this by dividing everything by 5 to the x. This gives us the quantity 3 to the x plus 4 to the x, all over 5 to the x, equals 5 to the x over 5 to the x. The fraction on the left can be split into two separate terms. Splitting the fraction gives us 3 to the x over 5 to the x plus 4 to the x over 5 to the x. Now we can use the exponent rule. a to the x over b to the x equals a over b, all raised to the power of x. Applying this rule, we get 3 fifths to the x plus 4 fifths to the x. On the right side, any non-zero expression divided by itself is simply 1. This gives us our simplified equation. To determine how many solutions exist, let's define a function and analyze its properties. Let's define f of x as the left-hand side of our equation. The problem is now finding where f of x equals 1. Is this function increasing, decreasing, or does it change direction? The derivative will tell us. Let's take the derivative of f with respect to x. For this, we use the exponential rule. The derivative of a to the x is a to the x times the natural logarithm of a. Applying this rule to both terms gives us f prime of x. Let's analyze the sign of this derivative. The exponential terms are always positive for any real x. But the natural logarithm of any number between 0 and 1 is always negative. So the derivative is a positive times a negative, plus another positive times a negative. A positive times a negative is always negative. This simplifies our expression to the sum of two negative quantities. The sum of two negative numbers is always negative. This proves that f prime is always less than 0 for any real value of x. And when a function's derivative is always negative, the function itself must be strictly decreasing everywhere. A strictly decreasing function can cross any horizontal line at most once. Let's visualize this. We will set up a coordinate plane. Here's the plot of our function f of x in blue, and the horizontal line y equals 1 in green. Just as we predicted, the decreasing blue curve crosses the green line at exactly one point. This single intersection occurs at the point 2, 1, which corresponds to our solution x equals 2. The combination of direct testing and calculus gives us a complete answer. Because the function f of x is strictly decreasing, it can only equal 1 at a single point. The unique solution is x equals 2. Thanks for watching.
If you enjoyed this blend of intuition and rigor, consider liking and subscribing for more mathematical explorations.